Good evening. Welcome to the 2017 and 2018 opening ceremony of Cardigan Mountain School. This is the 72nd year of our existence as a school and I couldn't be happier to be welcoming you all to this new academic year. Welcome to all of our returning students who have returned to the point. I hope you've all enjoyed the summer and are ready for an outstanding school year. Welcome to all of our faculty, those who are returning and those who are new to the community. Thank you for your commitment to the boys in your care. And most especially, welcome to our new students, our new members of our family. We will all strive to make your transition to Cardigan as smooth and as successful as possible. Let us all set a goal this year to make Cardigan as welcoming a community as we can for those of us who live here and for all of our guests who join us here on campus. Best wishes and good luck to every member of our community for a year filled with learning and growth. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce school leader Kate Goldberg. Cardigan Mountain School offers a close-knit community that prepares middle school boys in mind, body, and spirit for responsible and meaningful lives in a global society. To achieve our mission, we reward effort and accomplishment, helping each boy realize his academic, physical, and personal potential through the integration of following core values in all aspects of daily life. Compassion. Be kind. Seek to understand others and go out of your way to help. Integrity. Be honest. Remain true to yourself and your word. Respect. Care for yourself, others, and Cardigan Mountain School. Courage. Be brave. Face adversity with strength and persistence. You've just heard the mission statement of Cardigan Mountain School, along with our four core values, compassion, integrity, respect, and courage. This is what we come here to celebrate, the opening of another year to live the Cardigan way, as a community, as people who are part of something greater than ourselves. It gives me great pleasure now to introduce our speaker for tonight's ceremony, a gentleman who has embodied our values for the past 40 years. Think about that, my fellow Cougars. Sure, he has his own parking spot and a lounge. He plays in a band, shoots a hole in one on the golf course every now and then, and runs a killer dining hall. But above all his many achievements is his exceptional personality, his spirit. He's a man of joy and good humor. I'll never forget when he opened the whining door of Hopkins 205 and interrupted my class mid-lecture and said, he heard that it was some young man's birthday. When I said I didn't know who, he kept the press on and said he heard a certain red-haired faculty was one year older. Exposed. <laughs> I had escaped the birthday clap at breakfast that morning, but not Mr. Hart. And Chief Justice Roberts and Mrs. Roberts, who were sitting in on class that day, got to see the whole event. <laughs> I've grown to appreciate that Mr. Hart is and always will be a boy, just like all of you. He will be caring, he will be kind, he will be true to his word, his family, and his students. His comments will be thorough, and his effort will be sincere, and he will always, always have fun. It is an honor and a privilege to introduce 
the Dean of Rock and Roll, please join me in welcoming Mr. Wim Hart. Thank you, Mr. Novak, for those very kind words. But I must admit, when I threw open the door and walked into Mr. Novak's room, I had no idea that the Chief Justice and his wife were in attendance, but I had to carry on to save face. <laughs> Ten days ago, when I was asked if I would give this keynote address, there was nothing on the page that was hidden in my brain. What is always exciting is that I knew that when it came to this time, I would have manufactured something from absolutely nothing. I find this is one of the most wonderful and mysterious aspects of writing. The fact that one can start writing a piece without knowing where it will go and what examples will appear in the final draft. When you are asked to write a paper, don't worry if you don't have it figured out before you start. Just dig in and see what happens. I started this piece by looking up the word keynote, as this is a keynote address, in the Oxford English Dictionary, one of 650,000 words in the 20-volume set. Its first definition states it is a musical term first used in 1776 for the lowest note of the scale and identifies the particular key of that scale. I didn't plan on singing for this address, and I promise you I won't. So I looked further and found that a keynote address sets the tone for something which follows. In this case, it is the 2017-2018 academic year. I am a firm believer that it is better to know and not need than it is to need and not know. This quotation has been attributed to many people, one of whom is the late great blues man B.B. King. He was born Riley King, but legend has it that he got his nickname B.B. from either Blues Boy or Beale Street Boy the place where he became a star in Memphis, Tennessee. You may, be, you may have seen him playing his famous black Gibson guitar, which he called Lucille. It was named for the woman who ran a bar in the small town of Twist, Arkansas. A fight broke out one night, the wood stove got knocked over, and the place caught on fire. Everyone ran outside. And Lucille convinced B.B. to go back into the burning bar and retrieve his guitar. He did, and was so pleased to have his instrument that he named it after the woman who helped him save it. Useless knowledge? Probably. Well, it was until I needed something to put on the blank piece of paper in my head. I never thought I would ever need to know about Twist, Arkansas, but it turns out I needed it for this address. B.B. was right. It is better to know and not need than to need and not know. Sometime later this year, I'm sure a conversation much like the following will take place in a dorm room. Student number one. Why do I have to pick out adjectives in this sentence? I know how to read. Do I really need to know if a word is an adjective? I can bet that for the rest of my life, I'm never gonna have to know whether a word is an adjective or not. This is so irrelevant. Roommate, you must be doing homework for Mr. Hart. <laughs> Student number one, I am. You should have seen him in class today. He was going on and on about stupid adjectives. You'd think he thought they were the greatest thing since rock and roll. My advice to the frustrated student is simply this. It is better to know what an adjective is and never have to show off this knowledge than it is to need to know 
and not have a clue. Much of what we learn in school seems so irrelevant at the time. Why learn 12 times 7? The date of some war fought centuries ago. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis? Are you kidding? We don't know where our lives will lead us, but I can assure you that you will be asked to learn and things you will learn on your own this year and in years to come are not as irrelevant and useless as they may seem. The brain is a magnificent organ. Most of what goes in doesn't come out. But don't worry, you'll never fill it completely. My brain is full of what may seem useless and irrelevant information, but sometimes it does make a miraculous appearance. Jerry and the Pacemakers were a popular band from Liverpool, England in the 60s, much less talented than the Beatles, who were from the same city. Jerry and his band recorded a song called You'll Never Walk Alone from the musical Carousel. It was a huge hit in Liverpool and people started singing it so much during their beloved Liverpool football club games of the Premier League that it became the team's theme song. Useless, irrelevant information? You bet. Fast forward a few decades, and I'm having lunch with Mr. Edson, who is telling me how excited he is to be going to Liverpool, England, and seeing a Premier League game. I asked him if he was practicing his singing. No, he replied. What should I practice? You'll never walk alone is their theme song, I mentioned casually. How does it go, he asked. And I promised I would not sing. <laughs> Here again, what seemed like useless information made its appearance from deep in my useless information vault of a brain. It never dawned on me I would need to know the Liverpool Football Club's theme song, but when I did, it was there. What I learned was not so useless, it turned out. As you make your way through this wonderful, difficult, scary, and exciting year, remember B.B. King's words. It is better to know and not need than to need and not know. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Hart, for your messages and inspiring tips. Before I give the benediction, I'd like to begin by having us consider, think, and reflect on Cardigan families, past, present, and future. As all of us begin our new journey together, let us appreciate the opportunity life gives us. Please join me now in prayer or silent reflection. You may bow your heads if you wish. Lord of wisdom and light, surround us with the mysteries of the universe. Be with all of us as we begin our new journey. Give us strength, grace, and humility as we grow. Give us wisdom and knowledge in our minds as we search for understanding and peace and zeal in our hearts. Let us inspire and encourage others and recognize and appreciate what it means to be here. Let us bring our thoughts together with all members of our community as the Cardigan family. Amen.
We're about to begin the Cardigan Hymn. You will notice that on the back of your programs are the lyrics for the Cardigan Hymn, should you wish. <laughs> 